So, is everybody ready? Welcome to my lecture about waves in the ocean. This is just uh, mood, okay? This is just to get you in the, the right frame of mind, okay? For thinking about waves. So, here's some videos from my holidays. You can see waves coming into the beach here. I don't know, they're quite big waves. It was quite a rough uh, sea that day. And you can see that they're arriving at the beach. And they're kind of rolling over and breaking, and they're all moving towards the beach. And you can, I mean, one of the things, one of the first things you think when you see something like that is, what is a wave? Right? What is this thing which is coming towards me, coming towards the beach? And, and, uh, and sometimes it's rolling over and breaking, and sometimes it's just sort of undulating. And it's always coming towards you, right? So, and yet, apart from the tides, uh, it doesn't actually invade the land. It's always coming towards you, but it never gets any closer, right? So, how is that possible? What is it actually which is coming towards me here? When I look at this video. Um, it's not water. Well, it is. There is water coming towards me, but somehow it's not going to cover me up with water. I can sit there on the beach, sunbathing, and apart from the tides, I've got nothing to worry about. Right? And yet there's definitely something coming towards me with a lot of energy associated with it. So what kind of movement is it that I'm looking at? Right? And why is it that it's getting so big and then tumbling and falling over like this? And if you look far out to sea, then it's just sort of undulating. But as it gets closer, it seems to get bigger. And then it gets so big that it can't support itself and it falls over. And why does that happen? What, what circumstances lead to this breaking of, of the wave? And what is the kind of motion underneath the wave? Is there any motion underneath the wave? Is it, is it just going up and down? Is the water's obviously going up and down. Is that it? Or is it going back and forth as well? Is it moving around? Um, and why is it coming towards the beach? Why do waves always come straight towards the beach? Why doesn't it go across the beach? Or away from the beach? Have you ever thought about that? Okay. So, how, and how do we describe these things mathematically? Um, can we write down an equation on the blackboard which will give us a perfect description of what's happening here so we can understand it? Or at least draw some pictures and think about the, the circulation. This was quite a, as I say, this is quite a rough day. These waves are big because something happened far out to sea which set off this train of events which gradually arrived at the beach a few days later. This is coming from ocean swell and it was quite a big uh, weather system out to sea which caused this. Quite a dangerous day for, for swimming. In fact, nobody was swimming um, on that day. Uh, not even this guy, because I told him not to. Um, you might remember, you might recognise him. He's he helped you to understand the Coriolis force, but uh, since then he's grown. And he's a big lad now. Uh, so that's my introduction. So waves in the ocean, and this is on my website this lecture course. And so what are we going to do in this lecture course? Wow, this is awesome. I can hear a pin drop. I've never heard you so quiet before. This is fantastic. So we're going to start with general properties of waves. I've already started talking about them. Um, then we'll talk about deep and shallow water. Uh, and this is all surface waves, just surface gravity waves. Um, and then we're going to move on to geophysical fluids. So what does that mean? What do I mean by geophysical fluids? I mean fluids where the rotation of the Earth becomes important. Right? So how does the rotation of the Earth affect these waves? And then after, that, after we've considered that a bit, we'll go back to the smaller scales and we'll look at waves below the surface. Right? So internal waves are waves which exist in the body of the fluid, not just at the surface. And then finally, we'll have a look at tides. 
Um, Tides is the last thing I do. So what is, uh, I, when I showed the video, I was thinking, uh, what is, I asked the question, what is a wave? And uh, what is it that's making it oscillate up and down? So I want you to think about that for a second. Um, when you have something which is oscillating, it's because it has, it has some position, some kind of home position. And if you move it away from that home position, that equilibrium position, it will be attracted back to it. And you move it away in the other direction, it will be attracted back to it. So it's, it, that creates the oscillation. Right? So you need some sort of force to, to bring it back to its home position. Right? So what is that force? In the, in the case of surface waves, like the ones in the video, what is the force which brings the water back to its equilibrium position? Anybody? Any offers? Gravity, gravity yeah. Gravity is... So it's gone up and then it falls back down again, right? Yep, that's one. How about then when it's gone down, it gets pushed back up again. That's not gravity, is it? What's pushing it back up? Yeah, come on. What's the force? What's the force which pushes it back up? Hmm? Archimed. What is Archimed? Uh, is Archimed a force? Ar Archimed, Ar Archimedes, uh, was a Greek guy who ran around the streets naked shouting Eureka. Okay? Um, and you, you, you give his name very generously to a force. Uh, but what is the actual physical force involved? Floatability, yeah, which is uh, buoyancy in English. Okay? That's a buoyancy force, that's right. So what kind of physical force um, creates a buoyancy force? Because a buoyancy force is a kind of combination of uh, this kind of difference between gravity and something else, right? So what is the something else? What is it that pushes an object up when it's, when it's submerged in water? Imagine an object that's submerged in water. Something's pushing it up and something's pushing it down, apart from gravity, right? Something's pushing it in all directions, pushing it down, up, sideways. Hmm? Ah, pression, yeah, pressure. That's right, we got that. So, pressure is pushing on this thing, right? Uh, so, why is it pushing upwards, particularly? Because pressure doesn't have a direction. Pressure just pushes in all directions, right? So, what's happening is that there's a parcel of fluid, right? And pressure is pushing it this way, it's pushing it that way, equal and opposite, so it's not moving sideways. It's pushing it downwards, it's pushing it upwards. But, in the fluid, pressure is a function of depth, right? And pressure gets more as you go down. So the pressure below, pushing it up, is more than the pressure above, pushing it down. So the pressure, so there's a net force, which is upwards, right? The par if the parcel occupies a certain amount of space, right? And the net force pushing it upwards is equal to the weight of the water which is displaced, the water that would occupy that volume, right? That was Archimedes who, who, who realized that. Okay, so that's why you give that, you give his name to this force. Um, so you move a parcel away from its comfort zone, it's going to fall back down again. All right, we'll talk about buoyancy oscillations later on. But anyway, back to waves. This is a um, restoring force then, which when it goes down, it'll get pushed back up. When it goes up, it'll get pushed back down. We have different kinds of waves. Right? We have waves where... Um, basically, the restoring force is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Right? Example of that, uh, light or radio waves, electromagnetic waves in general. You have electric and magnetic forces creating an oscillation perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Right? There's also, so those are called transverse waves. Right? Those are also longitudinal waves. So waves where the force, the restoring force, is in the same direction as propagation. Can anyone give me an example of that? Longitudinal wave. Yeah? Sound. sound, right. Sound waves, longitudinal. I'm talking to you. I'm creating compression and decompression in the direction that I'm looking, and it's travelling to you. Um, and it's travelling without dispersion, which is how you can understand me, even though I'm speaking English. But we'll get to dispersion later on. Um, so that's a longitudinal wave. So how about these surface waves on the, on the ocean? Are they 
transverse waves or are they longitudinal waves? Who thinks they're transverse waves? Hands up high with pride if you think there's transverse waves. One person, right? Who thinks they're longitudinal waves? Nobody. So there's only one person here who's thinking at all. <laughs> uh, well, we'll get back to that. It's actually quite interesting. Um, yeah. If you thought, if you were, see, you, you, you missed a chance there uh, because anyone who said transverse ray waves, which is just fluid, okay, you're right, okay? Anyone who would have said longitudinal waves, well, yeah, you're right a lot as well. Uh, we're, all, we're all right. Yeah. So, uh, 